Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, whoa, for a uh, thirsty Thursday. Um, I want to start today. What's that? I said it's Huevis. Um, I, I want to start by uh, talking about global warming, if I can. Yes. Um, this is the way I'm going to do it. Because I have to do it. Because if I don't do, do it... Do you feel like we're a victim of it up here, Oscar, the global warming? What, with all the rain we've gotten that should be snow? I love it. You love the rain? Better than snow. I don't know. I mean... If I had coastal property, I don't know if I'd love it, but... yeah. All right, hold on. A you know, Mike is holding up his video now. I've got a thumbnail. Proprietary uh, videos and stuff like that. I'm not. A... Okay, that's not what I want, Carla. <laughs> Does Carla have a video about global warming? Don't yell at your wife online, please. It's not her. It has nothing to do with her. I'm so sad. All right, bottom line, I got to. I've, I've been teased, dicking around with this, and I don't want to do it. So, Ian, Hurricane Ian was what uh, two years ago? Ian. Correct. Yeah, it sounds about right. Two years ago down here, devastation, uh, 13 miles worth down on uh, Fort Myers Beach. I took a video tour of that. I showed that to you. What I did mention was uh, two years ago also when it got up north, um, a place where both Oscar and Rob have been. In fact, we've walked on it together. The uh, little uh, quaint little dock that we have up there. It's quaint, but it's a big dock that goes out into the harbor, and it's made of granite, and it's made of wood, mm-hmm. and uh, it's oh, right Maine, where yeah. it's where all the boats are up there. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. So uh, we uh, we lost that, and that's every... Uh, before that, we, we had a dock, uh, remnants of a dock from maybe 70 years ago, where it had, uh, had a, a storm that, uh, that got it, uh, and then we had Ian, and he understood that. Uh, I get a video yesterday of the remnants of that front that went through, and this was not a national story, but uh, up there, I look, and the dock is gone again. The, uh, the, the water has taken uh, the same. It, it wiped out roads up there, mm-hmm. and it wiped out the entire dock, and I'm sitting there going, well, that was two years. And it just makes me realize that uh, the weather events – that are happening all around the United States are probably not as extensively covered as when we get a major hurricane or a tornado outbreak. But when you live in a community that is uh, right on the ocean, very close by, I believe that that is kind of showing you that uh, the whole reason that this is a problem is because of high water. The water getting, the sea levels getting higher. And now... In the blink of an eye, a uh, a facility that was constructed the n- one year ago mm-hmm. from start to, from scratch, yes. brand new, brand new boards, brand new everything, and boom! Uh, somebody sends me a video. I said, "What the hell is that?" I didn't even know that these storms were going to impact. Uh, well, yeah, why would the you? Northeast, you're, like you're yeah. down there, yeah, and, and you and don't Mike, pay I'm attention like- to it, and then gone again like but worse gone this time like yes. like am, am completely I naive, eradicated Mike? um I, I read once time that docks are almost like prohibitively expensive to build they are it's so expensive and it's a community build. dock so everybody right, has to right. pitch in Chip but in, man right. it is just it is amazing the power of uh, water. I think we've seen it with tsunami coverage and with everything yeah. else. The but moors don't that, move, though, right? The moors still stay because they're at the bottom of the ocean. <sighs> That's a good question. Um, yeah. You're getting into the weeds with that, but I'm, I think, I don't, I think, I don't I think know Oscar, about. they are a chain that is uh, you know tied who would to know? a big piece of granite. Charlie Burney. And I'm probably saying too much, but his wonderful family owns a handful of marinas. Yes. Up on the East Coast? Yes. Mm -hmm. May I ask to just briefly call him and ask him about docks? Yeah, I'd love to talk to Charlie Burney about this. And Oscar, to answer your question, moorings are, at least the ones we have up in Maine, are a uh, chain tied to a 
a piece of granite, a big mm. slab right. of granite that goes on the bottom of the seafloor, and then they tie a rope to the end of that chain, and then a float to that, and that's what a mooring is. So I think in some cases they may leave a mooring out there, but yeah. in most cases they drag them up to shore uh, during the winter, oh, okay. and they put them aside. Oh, you and I so rode out to one together. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. we we uh, yeah. and so you guys know romantic. what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. and and it's not a massive structure, and it's certainly made of wood, a good chunk of it, but most right. of it's the base of it, which survived by the way, is uh, is made of granite, and it just blew me away. And then I see an unnamed area where, where someone's kayaking in the middle. of uh, so up where you are, how mm-hmm. impacted were you fellas with that that very thin line of storms that came a lot through of the rain, country? A lot of rain, like over four days, I think three inches of rain. Yeah. And, you know, low body, low, low ground low was got low ground. Low body. Mike, I'm, what I meant to say was low ground <laughs> received some flooding like Alexandria. And I think some in Georgetown, too. Right, Oscar? Yeah, the usual suspects. Yeah, same places uh, as normal. Uh, you know, don't, sandbags and stuff. Don't drown, turn around. Nothing crazy. Um, but they got a lot of that. Yeah, we called Miss Utility. We did all yeah. the things. Uh, my 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 power went out. That, uh, oh, that's I, right. We didn't lose a dock. I've texted uh, Charlie Bernie. Yeah, he's going to Charlie Bernie. Back. Yeah. He's going to reply Bernie. to Oscar. He's, Oscar says, "What do you know about docks?" He's going to say, "No health insurance." Uh, it's insured though right the doc yeah you have to insure a doc i don't know i'm not involved oh, in that uh that world up there mm. my brother-in-law would know but uh, yeah. he's busy today unfortunately with another family disaster so um it's it's just to me you hated when, that doc anyways let's be honest what's that you hated it. Like, it was hard to load the boat. No, he didn't it was hate a, the dock. It was dock. a disaster. He hated the boat the, that you took from the dock I love the dock. to the, the other the, the boat. The dock is, build it as better. a matter of fact, Oscar, if you, you ask me. You ruined a good pair of jeans. I remember that. If you ask me, <laughs> well, one of my favorite parts of the world up there is it would be that place. That's, that's a place that I have grown up with since I was a child. And uh, I remember some wonderfully fond memories when it seemed to me Old uh, Oceano Atlantico was a little yes. further away, uh, yeah. and what this is is just uh, amazing, like a, like a hurricane storm surge that uh, wiped it out. And then someone else sends me another picture of the road. You guys remember this because we would take the road around the edge of the point yes. of land, right? And we drive over there. Well, part of that road is washed out and gone because the ocean came up over. Gone, it. Yeah, gone, uh, wow. gone, ripped, ripped up and tossed. It's just Mother Nature reminding us uh, that, you know, here I am and uh, water getting higher, right? I mean, that's what mm-hmm. that is. Everybody that lives in these coastal areas should probably, including, uh, you know, the city of New York, should be aware. Miami, Florida, all these places mm-hmm. should be, uh, you know, and the whole tip, just the tip, the whole tip of Florida <laughs> should be aware of the fact that, uh, you know, these places that are down there, we get... But- in downtown Fort yeah. Myers, Florida, we get flooding now that we never got before. Just when it's high tide, it's like yeah. maybe it's wow. time we're to hypocrites. move. Yeah. We're hypocrites. Why are we hypocrites? Because way? you because because you don't recycle. You you went on the show and said that you you, you don't care about recycling. No, recycling is not changing the water. I recycle. Levels. I recycle every week. I have recycling. I have trash and recycling. In my kitchen and uh, outside of my house. Oh, I want to. I, then I apologize. Do I? Am I mistaken that I thought we've had this conversation? We had this co- he, conversation back in the day when uh, the you didn't believe in global warming. No, I believed in or global vaccines. Warming. We yeah. we had this conversation back in uh, Virginia when um, I I didn't do as good a job, uh, and I don't. Consider but now what you I recycle. Do, yeah, but I don't consider it my uh, doing a better job. I consider it it is. SOP down here. You kind of it's you have part two, of life. Yeah, you have two giant yeah. bins, yeah. and one takes uh, that, and one yeah. takes uh, the other thing. Yeah. Okay. And well, I'm happy to hear that. I'm still spit my gum out the window. I still spit my gum out the window. And to be honest, yeah. Oscar, recycling isn't as big a deal in my house since I quit drinking, because there's a lot less cans and bottles, so it's just mostly trash now. But we're doing our part. Yeah, you want to, we still uh, recycle. Do you want to get a? Are you okay with your? Hand? Do you want to get a? Cop yeah, just stretching my hands for a sec. No, I'm good. I want to get a cot. I, I just it was a weird uh, 
body position, and uh, I was you didn't care for it. That. It was just stretching. That's do all. Do you do you feel? And we've had this conversation. It's at nice, times. isn't it, Mike? <laughs> no. You don't like shoulders. that? I have shoulders. I have sore shoulders from bowling last night. That we are <laughs> at the beginning, or was the bowling the, alley? So was the bowling alley wet? In the, I saw your bowling uh, pictures. By the way, I, I we have to get we we have to have some sort of fashion conversation. This is it's crazy. all right. I'm glad you brought it up <laughs> oh, because no. all right. You know what I was guilty of, and and look, I'm telling Carla, Being I hot. want full. I want what is it? Full creative control on what yeah. she posts. That was not a flattering picture. I was, I was, sh- I was. I you was, know what? And she I was mad take it for. You. I was mad. Because for you. I was wearing the old shirt with the new pants. I was mad. For, I was like, "What is it?" The what's shorts happening were here? Greg Norman small shorts. The shirt was Tubby Boots shirt. Yeah. Which, because I still haven't, you know, uh, edited you my be, closet properly. You shouldn't be bowling in shorts, Mike. That's not respectful. Well, that's down game. here. Everybody bowls. There's nothing in shorts. wrong with shorts. Florida. He just looked like a stick of cotton candy. It was not. It was yeah. It, thank you with the with the small bottom and the yeah. All right, yeah, thank you, yeah. thank like, you. Like, what Put is it down. Here? Put it down. I think you look nice. I get it. BS. You, you'd look better if the shirt actually fit you. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little large. Mm-hmm. A little large. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I, I look. It's happened in the it, it, look. I went forty pounds with minimal adjustment. And in the last ten, yeah. suddenly it's like I got to do this. I got to do this. You, I you'd look this. better. Yeah. I, I, I but just, you're absolutely you're, right. You're a radio god, and I sit there and I'm like, this this guy. No, that that is he, he should look a proper fitting shirt. That is a perfectly reasonable. Agreed. Ensemble. It wasn't, and most of your shots have not been. Yeah, and she's like, promote the weight loss, promote the weight, take this yeah. video, take that, and it's like, uh, you know, and I'm like, back off, sister. <laughs> well, no, promoting is one thing, but. You need a stylist. Yeah, I'm looking at that. You know what he needs? He needs a person. I look bloated. That's what I look. I look bloated. I I don't don't look thin. That's for sure. I do not look thin at all. And everybody said the same goddamn thing Oscar probably said. He doesn't look that thin. No, I just said, so I was like, why does he look? Maybe a dandelion is a better. That's why it's zeal. And then there's like a big like. It's ridiculous. By the way, would you like to know what my first game was last night of the three? Sure. Yeah. 81. Oh, my. Well, the, the shirt held your dad. All that, all that fabric. 80, <laughs> 80, 81. The ball kept getting caught in his shirt. Yeah, messed, messed Is Charlie up. in the building? Charlie Bernie? I was waiting. Charlie Bernie? No, he's actually uh, as... This is when I know um, America. <clears throat> Hold on. Hello? America. Yeah. America. You know you've made it in life. When you are at a board meeting for a separate business you own in the eight o'clock hour, mm-hmm. which is a response I got in a board meeting, is this emergency? And I said, no. Well, it kind of so is. I mean, if we want to know about the docs, tell them it's pretty important. No, I don't play that game. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, no, I didn't. I couldn't. And I don't know. Uh, but if it's made of wood, we can rebuild it. Sure. Yeah. Wow. They, but 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 Mike, the rain that was here became snow, and then a snowstorm and a squall there, right? Right, right. Got worse as it went northern. Yeah. So that's that's uh, the beginning. It's while nature. It was still there. Is there that the little? Is that the little harbor master house? That's the little harbor master. Where you house. lost your virginity? That's it. No, that's not that place. That's a different place. Oh. That place with the, you mean the place with the uh, historical marking plaque on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's further away from that the had water. The fr- the That's French across li- the street, but the, there is they a had boat The French house. lattice on there. <laughs> there is a boat house. How about a They're still boat. flying the French flag there, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> right above the plaque. <laughs> they had a, they had a <laughs> showing of Napoleon. about having a computer screen directly in the line of what the, the device I want to control? And remember, if you show up on Tuesdays, free beignets. <laughs> free beignets on <laughs> I would love a beignet. Oh, they're great. The French. No, donut. I, uh, I, I don't need a beignet. I'll be, based on that picture, I need to work harder. Is what I need to. Well, do. this is okay. Really, let me be clear. You're skinnier than that photo and that or in these Absolutely. videos. That photo look. sucks. Rectum. 
And that is not what I want to do. Now everyone wants but to But certain see. people insist, and, uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I really am. I'm trying to. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we have, uh, we have uh, received certain products at the uh, TMOS box. store. Yes. And we are very, very excited about that. And I have the design lined up, and uh, we should be making progress within the next week or so to uh, have a major announcement about uh, something we're going to have for you. Very excited about it. If so. these hats move, may I make a secondary suggestion? This is not going to be good, but go ahead. A hat with a happy clam on it. You were right. You were right, Rob. Oh, yeah, he's easy to read. What do you mean? <laughs> because that's not... You know that I didn't want you talking about that. That's And social. that's also not and what then, we want And then I had a very that... funny... Like, for example, I put duct tape and rip hair out of my body, and that doesn't make yeah. it onto the short, but he mentions the clam. Bingo! Thank well, you. Well, it's, it's on fire on social media. I just figured if we should... Of course you know. it's on fire. It's yes. en fuego. It is en fuego. Everything that makes me uncomfortable goes totally en fuego. Yeah. As the kids would say, Mike, it is fire. Um, <laughs> so that's the, uh, that, that's the whole thing. I'm sorry about the doc. Yeah, that sucks. Well, it's just they, you know, it just means to me that even down here where I live, I think that uh, you hear the same old anthem of, well, Hopefully it won't be. Uh, we won't get another one for a while. I don't think. I think those days are gone. I think we're getting them routinely, and I think we're going to get these storms. And I think this is the new normal that we're going to get these on a regular basis. And I'm not talking about just coastal areas of Maine or mm. uh, beach areas down in Florida. I'm talking about inland where you see places like Gatlinburg, Tennessee, mm. uh, with flooding. And uh, tornadoes, streets, uh, tornadoes, everything. Mm -hmm. It seems like. Where are we safe? That's a wonderful question. Where do you think in right. the United States? Yeah. All right. Got California, wildfires, mudslides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get uh, earthquakes. You get the Midwest, tornado alley. Tornadoes. Right? Mm -hmm. You get that. And uh, wicked blizzards, too. They, they where, well, if you wanted to say, if you wanted to live in a part of the United States, which would mm -hmm. be utterly free of natural disasters, where do you think, where would you want to settle? I, I'm not sure I have the I have my top two. All right. Go ahead. Number one, and I've heard terrible things and I've heard great things, but as of late, terrible, but for some reason it still attracts me. Orange County, California. No. Dude. New no. Newport. No. Earthquakes. Newport. Let me give you a little uh, tidbit Newport, of a, California. A, a thing called San Andreas Fault. Uh, why don't yeah. you blast out your Orange County map? And uh, take a gander as to yeah. just where that little fault runs. At least I can go out on the beach. But we, you not see, if you're there's a the purpose to tsunami. Yeah. Okay, that's one. You gotta, if not there, thinking safety. No, I would say Cal City. I would say California because you get wildfires in California. But so Orange County, yes. At least there's water and beauty and yeah. sunset. I think the water might you, be the problem. If you look, if you move to California, it would be great for the show. I will, yeah, it would be great. great Look, I'll take this. Is going to be a blasphemous. My sister lives in a beautiful area. Uh, sees you know, views of the Pacific Ocean. You love it out there. You went out I, for but like three I, days. But, you but, I, for a but month. Palos Verdes, where she lives, is gorgeous. And what does that mean in English? That's where Tiger got into the uh, action, yes, I believe. Correct. Right? What does Palos Verdes mean in English? Uh, uh, Palos Verdes is uh, green a, a, park, green sticks, green, green sticks. sticks. Green sticks. That's what I'm going to call it. Palo Verde. More like green. More, how about this? You more, more like green backs. Did you say Verde? You know, a lot Isn't of green backs. Isn't it Verde? Backs. Isn't it Verde? Yeah, Verde. Yeah, it's green. Verde. Okay. But Newport, California is, is even, in my eyes, nicer. But that's just me. But in Newport. If not Newport. If we're yes. talking about natural disasters, in Newport, let me, let me describe my impression of Newport. Fabulously wealthy. And... What they've done in Newport, you've got the hills, you've got rolling hills in California. You have elevation changes yep. all yeah. over the place, yeah. especially uh, certain areas of California. Newport Beach and Newport, specifically, yeah, Newport. you have these, these mountains. Beach. They're little mini Thank mountains. You. And yeah, what Newport they've done Beach. on many, 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 too many, in my humble opinion. This was 
10 years ago, I thought it was too many. Mm -hmm. They have shaved off the top of these mountains, and they've put yeah. developments up there. And well, you know, I come, from a, I come from a mountainous people. You do? I was born, I was born in, in the Andes. So maybe that's what draws me to Newport Beach. Well, but it's not the kind of mountain. That and the beauty and the wealth. That aside, um, the second place, and, and I've had conversations with Shannon about this. And I still, I, by the way, I would still do the podcast from all these places. Good. Well, I will want, because you, you do it in California. You don't seem excited about that. What's uh, that? <laughs> Rob's me? like, good. No, no. He, Rob's well, like, I was, you good. Know, I was just trying to play three moves ahead, and now it's Thank different. You. Yeah. The second is Park City, Utah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, gorgeous. Avalanches. Forest fires. Uh, I'm just. Forest am, fires? No. Listen to me. I don't me. think that's, I, a, that's a big deal up an, there, forest fires. What? I don't think they get a lot of forest fires in Utah. Look, Mac, look up Utah forest they fires. They do. In Park City? Park City is the mountainous ski resort area. In Park yeah, City, Utah. I, I'm not, yes, I'm not even going to do. I, I watched the documentary ski. on I watched the documentary on avalanches I can, the other night. I can try to get in shape to snowboard again. That'd be fun. What I'm saying to you is an area of the United States, and this is an intellectual exercise where I'm suggesting where would you want to live, where you would be immune, basically immune, from the potential of Wichita, life. Kansas. Nope, tornadoes. Nope. That's the heart of Tornado Alley. Some That's of the worst Alley. tornadoes yeah, Mike, in America. Really only also, one. the home of Hoovy's Garage, if you're a YouTube fan and a car guy. Mike, okay, okay, here we go. Okay. Are those, what is this? Are those the tectonic plates? Those are the different types of natural disasters, like tornadoes, hurricanes, wildfires, and floods, and they're color-coded. Can you go oh, through them, Mac? Let me, let me look Can at you go map. through because I'm it's guessing so the, right, the red it's right is tornadoes. The, the, the red is tornado. There's Tornado Alley right in the center of the country. The, yeah, the deep red is earthquakes. And that's California. You see that? Yeah, in I California. see it. Yeah. Is there a deep red? Uh, no, that's all. So in uh, like Georgia, the deep south, that's all tornado color, correct? That's a little bit of both, it seems. Really? Okay. I think, or it's right in you like Kentucky you have a and sliver. Tennessee. Yep, you do have There's a, a little bit like in, in, in New Mexico. New Mexico. Yep. New there you go. Mexico, Mexico has floods. What? But, but yeah, I would have, say but New, you have New that Mexico. One sliver of nothing. Yeah, they do have some wildfires in New Mexico, but on like the the east side. Yeah, really nothing. I like the and uh, quite northern, a bit of Texas as well. I like that northern portion. I hate to say that it's so close to Canada, but up there, maybe it might be like Montana, where there it is perfectly uh it's perfectly white on the map. That might be a good go to. Northern because, Maine looks like it might be okay. Yeah. But you get a lot of snow, a lot of schnee up there. Yeah. yeah uh, it, by the way, New Hampshire and Vermont this look does pretty not include solid. Snow. But no, do you remember when Vermont had the flash floods? When yep. the storms came through and it wiped out downtown areas of little small towns. Mm -hmm. So that's not, you know, they don't have that on their little disaster there's, map. Mike, but if there's you look, really uh, only one choice that's wise. I mean, if you're really getting down, it's Lanham, Maryland. Lanham. <laughs> Lanham up here. What's the orange, Mac? What's the orange color? The orange is floods. Yeah, floods. Oh, hey, okay. uh, Oscar, so you're a little earthquake danger. You see that uh, map there? You <clears> see where that, uh, that, that danger is? Look, look at that. That's Orange County, Cali. What, right I, I, I've lived through an earthquake, Mike. So we all have. 4.2. Yeah. No big deal. No, that's I, how old I, you were? I, I believe no, mine, Over this mine past break, a, I woke up to one. It, oh, it was okay. a rumble. Mine might have been a 5.7, and it was a... They, like, they, they went I've about played, their business. I, I have played mine the was a 12. trombone that moved my body more than a 4.2. 12. It was 12. It was horrible. That's when That's you why I lost wife. my hair. That's when you met your wife and the earth moved. That's <laughs> how that works. Feet. That's how you roll. <laughs> no. My father was in, I, I asked him this, He's, he was in Mexico City when an 8.1 hit. Massive quake. That is big. Uh, he said that that was one of, the, one of the four times in his life he thought he was a goner. He, uh, uh, and an 8.1 in, you know, back then an infrastructure that wasn't built for earthquakes. Mm-hmm. I think the the great earthquake of it was in eighty five or eighty eight in Mexico City almost destroyed the whole city, and then the second one was in Iran, uh, which was a he 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 went out there on a, 
with, uh, with, uh, with the delegation for first response after one of their massive earthquakes, and that earthquake was um, an 8.7, and he said that's the other time he thought he was going to die. Mike, weren't you in Terrifying. San Francisco in 1906? Yeah. And, for the big uh, one? The, it was not the earthquake as it? much as the fire, Rob, the fire that was caused by I remember, uh, the yeah. gas lines. For the World's Fair. Severing. Uh, mm -hmm. no, Mike just, was uh, performing at the World's Fair. I was, well, I was with, uh, that's back when I was with Wild Bill Hickok. And, uh, you know, Annie Oakley. Yeah. And we had a hell of a show. Uh, That's right. It was really, really great. We had some. Nikolai uh, Tesla was. Uh, Mac, what is that map that you put up now? Was. This is basically per state of what the typical thing is a typical natural disaster. It's, these maps are well, even look, look simpler. You, Utah doesn't have anything. It's good to go. Snowstorms. You, big deal. Utah? Utah has uh, earthquakes. Well, is in their Mac, bedrooms, is it Mac, wah, they can have wah. multiple Isn't Mac wah. the perfect yeah, yeah, guy for this? this is they really... have earthquakes, uh, blizzards, and wildfires. And polygamy. How dare you? That too. Don't the, wildfires, a, don't the wildfires melt the snow, though? <laughs> Different time of the year. Wait okay, a second. Sorry. Well, it looks <laughs> to me that... Did you just say uh, yes, that you ahead. have a big love aunt and uncle in Utah? No, not... I have an aunt and uncle in Utah. They are not Mormon. Well, that doesn't matter. You, they are not big love. They are in Salt Lake City. Um, I'm big can city. I say something? And I don't want to Please. offend people. We have listeners everywhere in the country, so I don't want to. You? But, you know, I, dug, I, I hung in uh, Salt Lake a couple of years ago uh, when we were out there. And, you know. You were in the airport. That's not a hang. That's not. We, were, we stayed in. We stayed overnight in Salt Lake City. In a hojo. Yeah, not a big deal. But Salt Lake I mean, City, not so great. By the way, a, a good enough, a, a great enough city to bring the Winter Olympics. How dare you? I went to that. I didn't. You care. went to the Winter Olympics? Yeah, we stayed with my aunt and uncle in Salt Lake City. My uncle actually works on the slopes, like he runs a snowcat, and so he was actually there plowing the snow for the Olympics. You might know got, uh, Max, so we went uh, to visit. uncle. His name is Scatman Crothers. Yes, I remember. That's a I shining remember. reference for you Stanley Kubrick fans out there when Scatman got a snowcat and then was uh, chopped in half by Jack Nicholson. Yeah, <laughs> how unfortunate. They call <laughs> it shining. <laughs> um, sorry, I love that. Wait, 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 wait. Have any of you all been to a summer or winter Olympic Games outside of Mac? No. I have not. I would no, love to. No. I would absolutely That rolled love off to. his tongue. Like he that's just what happens to him. You know why I would love an Olympics? Because I would think that the venue, especially a Winter Olympics, the venues are at the Winter Olympics normally so spread out that uh, you know, it's just uh, you can enjoy the atmosphere a lot more as opposed yeah. to the concentrated nature of things. But I hear they're 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 crazy too. You know, they're, as they're a nuts. Mike as a as a guy like who's getting been good the, tickets for a good the good events are very hard to get. You've yeah. been uh, you've been in the Northeast your entire life. Have you ever been to Lake Placid, not for an Olympic event? Have you ever been to no? The but my ex wife uh, was uh, a skater and right. trained mm -hmm. up in Lake Placid, and it was. I've always wanted to visit that part of the world because I it's a really pretty uh, part of New York State, and uh, I you know it'd be a great place to have a Winter Olympics again. But that but that changes too. Getting right back to my original point about the warming. You know, how many Olympics yeah. do we hear now where well, yeah. they're having some trouble with this particular mountain because it used to be all these areas would be a given that you would get a and, particular kind of weather. That's not the case anymore. They've gone from snow to being muddy. They're just muddy mountains. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I can't come the, to the, the slopes right now because the, the snow and ice has melted. The three trips that I've had to Utah. Uh, one, the largest was one of the largest airports in the world. Uh, one of my mo favorite most, airports. Uh, the most walking into. I've ever done. Yeah, it's uh, one of my, my favorite life. airports because yes. you fly into the valley uh, with the snow capped mountains surrounding it. I think it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I it, it's just it's such it's such beauty, such splendor, and, and and most of it is untouched. Just just glorious. He paints. I'm serious. Doesn't he, Mike, doesn't he? I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't take him seriously when he What well, I'm serious. Him. Such beauty. Such glory. Such magnificence. Uh, the it's erect it's nipples of the mountains protruding. Stop it. Stop it. it. It's 45, um, 45 to 90 minutes to where you want to go, where that is, but still beautiful. No, that's Houston. 45 oh, minutes in a cab worst. wherever you want to go. That's Houston. Yeah. Houston, Houston means I'm one day closer to you. Gatlin Brothers. <laughs>
Not to be confused with Gatlinburg, where they had the uh, floods. What yeah. events did you see while you were there, Mac? Uh, we saw the Super G, which is uh, oh. alpine skiing. I know what that is. That's uh, we saw. Hey, can I ask you the, about that? Because I've always wondered. Sure. Um, the vast majority of spectators for the Super G are down at the bottom of the mountain. Am I right about Correct. that? Yes. So you watch it on giant screens. Am I right about yeah, that? Yeah, it's a jumbotron until they come over like that big Less, leap of the downhill. And, and so what is the experience like to see the finish when those guys are basically always on a straightaway down there? I mean, that's got to be pretty cool, I would imagine. Well, it's, it's like for the – I remember for the Salt Lake games, like the biggest, most uh, – dangerous jump was right at the end so you saw them coming over that let lip in the air and having to land in a lot of people fell oh well, really on the last one the last uh, um, the like, last it was jump. like the last yeah. little like lip well known fact mike difficult to mm -hmm. find the g spot <laughs> it is indeed it is indeed uh, i also saw the snowboarding solemn that's that's wait, wait, cool. You saw? Did you see the flying tomato in his prime when he was just coming up? I don't know who that is. You don't know who? You don't know the greatest snowboarder in oh, in no, the no, history no, no. of slalom. A, slalom. Oh, slalom. Uh, not the not the, not the, not, not the not half pipe. pipe. Okay, not sorry. half. Not pipe. Sean White. No. Okay. All right. Didn't, you saw the uh, slalom guy. Yes, yeah. we saw the slalom, and we saw I slalom think, a little more. You know, a little less elite, a little more gritty. Right. The Super yeah. G screams, you know, summering in the south of France. The yeah. Super that G one's is, the... you know, the fact is when you talk People about People can that, die. And it'd be the north of France, probably. Be in yeah. the Alps. I don't know. That's why I don't know. It'd be the know. French I don't, Alps. I don't know these things. The Austrian Alps, the Italian Alps. South of France I... is where you summer. South of France would yes. be, uh, you know, nice. the, uh, the Riviera, the French Riviera. Got it. And then the north of France North is of where? France would be the Alps, where you have got all it, the, got the got fantastic got it, got it. skiers. And the uh, greatest skiers are French, Italian, and Austrian, because they have those phenomenal mountains. And St. Martin isn't part of France. St. Martin is not. It's a Caribbean uh, <laughs> island uh, that uh, was uh, Thousands of miles day. away, yeah. So, you know, where was... they spoke French. And yes, a lot yeah. of the islands, a French province, colonized Colony. by yeah. oh, got uh, it, European got it. countries, where Mac has spent many a new year. Right, that's true. And yes. you know, knowing Mac as we know Mac, uh, I'm well, I don't know Mac. He's every, every time <laughs> we talk to him, something different comes. I out. I know, but what we have discovered in the past is when he goes to something rather miraculous, he has a Mac styled takeaway. So, yeah. when you were at the Olympics, what was yeah. the thing that most impressed you? Was it the food? Did you see? Any celebrities, or was it actually the sport? I really only remember the sport. Okay. I don't remember the food whatsoever. I was 10. This was 2001. Okay. So I was 10 years old. So I don't remember too much, but I definitely remember the different skiing events because that's what we were mostly interested in because my whole family were a group of skiers. You ski? I used to ski. When I was a kid, so he was dragged around by uh, by his dad there, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know uh, because he was a young boy and he didn't move as fast. As a matter of fact, we got a clip of uh, Mac's oh, father. Go ahead, okay. play that. Oh! Christ Almighty! It's like I'm sitting here playing cards with my brother's kids or something. You nerve wracking sons of bitches. Was that was just a very bad day, right? Yeah. yeah yes. It got heard... better at the end of the day because his dad sang the fart song. I, I heard I heard the powder out there is pure. Call back from yesterday's show. I actually remember, I found out, my dad called me and told me what the actual song was. I figured that out. Oh, what was the song? You so said it actually, was like Beans, Beans, the Musical Fruit. That's right? what. That's one of them, but that wasn't the one I was originally thinking of, okay, and my but, dad reminded but, me. Would you like but, to sing the one just, you were originally sure. thinking of? Just quickly, just for, the, for our new listeners, yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> Mike, please set the table of what he's about to do. We were discussing on yesterday's show. The uh, concept of soothing uh, things that are rituals, are, are yeah. rituals that yeah. our moms would do at bedtime. In Rob's case, it was leaning over, and I did it with my son. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, yeah, yesterday, uh, not at night, but I just I said, "This is what Rob's mom used to do," and I did the dog sniff. And you'll yeah. be happy to know, at ten years old, a big laugh out of that one because that's it's, great, it's natural. And then uh, Max said. I said, my mom would sing How Much Is That Doggy in the Window? And then Max said uh, his father would do a fart song to make him laugh at, uh, at bedtime. And now you actually have the fart song? that You, you yes. remember it? Uh, it wasn't at bedtime. It was actually when he was changing me and my brother's diaper. Oh, so this is when that. you were itty-bitties. 
Uh, yes. Uh, like, well, he like kept 15, singing it. 15, he told me much that he would <laughs> sing this, and he'd sing this quite often. <laughs> Mike, you... can a fetish be taught, or is it always? <laughs> Could you recreate the song for us, Mac? I, yes, I think of that course. Would be... This may so, be the short, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I would think so. As Nothing it goes, about a clam today, hopefully. As it goes, you're my buddy, you're my pal, do da, do da. When you stink, you really smell dipsy doo da day. That's it. That's sweet. Bravo! That is really good. Author! <laughs> how old are you and your brother? How's, how many years separated are you? Two. Oh, okay, yeah. And he's and still a tennis just... pro, right? Yes, yes. And you, you both... laughed when you were having being changed? You were You were giggling when he would do that? I guess. I just liked the song. I don't know. He's. A, it's just. I. That was just a memory that popped in my head yesterday oh, that sweet. I haven't. I haven't thought of that in so long. That what did your funny. dad say when you asked him about it? Was he concerned or curious? Uh, no. He he was a little curious. He didn't remember initially either. Did he ask he if the call me later in the day? Did he ask if the call was being recorded? <laughs> no. No. We also talked about who is this. <laughs> Show me on the doll where you sang the song. <laughs> <laughs> on that note that's it we gotta we gotta take a break it's time and, uh, yes. <laughs> we uh we have a very big big show a lot of stuff we are going to dive into later on the broadcast mr santana uh, alerted all of us last evening to the uh the product that is uh, just sweeping the internet uh, over the last 24 hours the <laughs> mcdonald's water decker uh and we'll do that in more yeah, buddy. <laughs> Hey, hey, it's, hey it's a lot of burger. <laughs> uh, don't reinvent yourself for 2024. Just rehydrate yourself. Yes. There's my little liquid IV cup, ladies and gentlemen. It hydrates two times faster than water alone, all in a single delicious stick. No sugar, no artificial sweeteners. You can feel like a hydrated new you, ready to take on 2024. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, and I have been drinking it for a very long time. It's so good, and it's so easy. Just add it to your water bottle, shake it up, and go. Uh, try the white peach, the green grape, or my favorite, lemon lime. Got a new bag of that out in the kitchen right now. Actually, I love them all, and you will too. Make it a Liquid IV 2024 and be the best that you can be. Rehydrate yourself for the new year. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco. Or do this. Get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use our code TMOS at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. Hey, there it look. Is. The Kraken is getting its diaper changed. There it is. Where did it touch you? You are so sick, uh, but funny. 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 Uh, hey, where's my boom? Is it there? Yeah, play it now, please. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. There we go. That didn't take long. Uh, let's start today. Uh, with Jennifer Lawrence, uh, everybody. Uh, I just like this story. It was cute to me. when uh, Because it kind of it would be similar to a lot of people in the same situation. When Jennifer Lawrence looks back on her wedding day, all she sees is pain. Well, not really. But in a recent interview, she called it awful. <laughs> oh, wow. This is funny. Like a lot of brides, Jennifer found it hard to have fun because it was so stressful and she was so worried about her guests. Kind of the way I used to feel when I had a boat. I would be just so worried about somebody hitting their head, falling overboard, messing up the boat, going mm -hmm. aground. I just couldn't mm -hmm. enjoy myself. It didn't help that she got married in October in Rhode Island. Uh, Jennifer says she was freaking out about her guests being cold. And uh, while most people reassured her they were fine, her mother wasn't so uh, polite. She told Jennifer, it's freezing out there. Your grandmother almost died. Wow. <laughs> Why Rhode Island? That's interesting. Probably Maybe that's where she's from. Newport. Newport, right? It's beautiful. Yeah, right? Newport's mm -hmm. something, something else. Uh, the chaos actually started at the rehearsal dinner when Jennifer... Booted out Robert De Niro. Oh. Not sure what he was doing there. She says, quote, I looked over and I saw Bob, 
That's when you know you're a well, biggie. Of course. You call him mm-hmm. Bob De Niro, who doesn't know anybody, and he's kind of wandering around. I immediately was like, no, this isn't what he wants to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't De Niro always have the... Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I don't see him as a very cheerful guy. Uh, so she went over and whispered. I was like, go home. And he was nice. Uh, he, like, talked to my parents and was polite. But I was like, go. <laughs> That's my, was she doing a movie with him at the time? Is that why he was there? Well, they did uh, They did that beautiful movie with uh, Bradley Cooper. Oh, that's uh, right. That's right. A uh, Silver God, Linings Playbook. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yes. That's what it was. Bingo. And uh, she does not come from Rhode Island. This surprised me. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, born in Kentucky. In Kentucky, perhaps the mm-hmm. hubby uh, was Maybe, born yeah. up in Rhode Island. And yep. by the way, Silver Linings Playbook, in my estimation, uh, well, pretty close to The Help. Help was a great movie, but I think Silver Linings uh, Playbook, best thing she's ever done. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. But I uh, love, love, love that movie. I like that movie from last summer where she did the nude scene. Uh, probably one of my favorite, favorite names in music has always been Wiz Khalifa. Absolutely yes, yeah, yeah, love yeah. the way that rolls I've off. I've seen the him in Famous. concert, believe it or not. Super nice, yes. by the way. There's, well, there's uh, a reason there's why a, he's super nice. There's a podcast called uh, Rap Stories yes. uh, available now on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Been in the game a long time, a very, very long time. Podville uh, Media and ESPN. This Happy is the latest for uh, him. Wiz Khalifa shows up to his 10 year old son's parent teacher conferences. Hi. God. Wow. He, he was so hungry when we talked to him. Uh, he says the teachers the expect and know what's up. So they expect that Wiz is going to come in. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, all right. Well, at least he's showing up. Uh, I mean, most people don't even go. That's true. Uh, he's pretty sure his son smells like weed when he goes to class anyway. Quote, I'm pulling up high because I want them to connect with the real me. Well, that's kind of counterintuitive but that's that's like you can do what you want when you're a a mega uh, like hip-hop star there is a different standard for hip-hop stars because Mm -hmm. you can show up high and you can be a national treasure like snoop Mm -hmm. and and marijuana can be a big part of your life but i disagree with the premise that the real guy uh, you know the real guy is uh, is heavily medicated any way you slice it so i think the real guy would be you know well he probably never is not (laughs) So it's a moot point. Maybe yeah, when he wakes Willie up Nelson's first supposedly thing high all the time. All the yeah. time. Uh, they're not going to get a fake version of me or this made-up parent that society makes you think that you're supposed to be. I would give a million dollars to see a video of one of those parent-teacher conferences. I truly would. Uh, he says, I am who I am. It's not because I'm a celebrity or anything. Well... It helps. Uh, it but doesn't it's, hurt. Uh, because it really is what I believe, and why not get the real me? Why would I have to change yeah. who I am or act like I'm not that for these places that I'm going to? <laughs> no addiction, though. No psychological addiction. No, no, you, not at all. Do you remember either you, Mike, or, or Rob? Yeah. Your parents ever going to a parent-teacher conference? Oh, that's a great question. My mom, yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. My mom was head of the PTA at my school. Once, once I remember. And yeah, my, it was my early on. My parents were working on. They never went. Yeah, yeah. My mom never. Uh, my mom was very, very. Well, if she's the head of the PTA, yet you gotta go. And but by the my way, parents I didn't come from a wealthy never. family. I mean, it, it might have. Uh, well, you it's know. not about that. I'm just saying, like, it's if if if. if it's the time and people care to do so. Well, the reason I bring it up is when wild. you say both your parents worked. Um, growing up. My mom didn't. My mom was right on the cusp of that. It's a job to be a uh, be a mom. But I'm and, talking dad, about the actual going out into the workforce yes. with a two parent yeah. income, like we do in yeah. the O'Mara household now. You and uh, and all three of us do. We have uh, wives that work. The thing about it is, back then, it wouldn't really even matter what your you know socioeconomic level was. A lot of women uh, were active in my era. In uh, well, they in weren't the allowed to work before the suffrage movement. <laughs> More about voting, but you're you're really confusing. But if you go back and look at what's the movie we were just talking about, Uh, lessons in chemistry. Ah, oh, yeah. yes, yes. True. So yeah. my mom Fantastic was on the, 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 the tail end of that lessons yeah, yeah, in yeah. chemistry, and the workforce was young women, primarily mm-hmm. out of high school, primarily who uh, stopped working once they got hitched. That's just yeah. the way it was back in the day. Sunnier days. And, and then no, they I'm smoked sorry. a lot of pot and went They'd to They'd all go to the PTA meetings high. <laughs> Super high. <laughs> um, it's time for 2024's first 
nostalgia death, something that ceases to exist even though virtually no one was aware that it still existed in the hmm. first place. The hmm. Makers, this to me was my favorite, and I loved it when I was a child. Mm -hmm. uh, the Makers of Fruit Stripe Gum. Oh, a great gum. Oh, my God. I forgot about yeah. Fruit Stripe. They announced that it's been discontinued after an incredible 55-year run. Doesn't 55 it seem, years. And, Mac, I know we have a, a commercial for be, uh, Fruit Stripe gum. And while you get that ready, doesn't it seem that gum used to be a bigger deal? Because I can think of jingles that I can still remember. Remember, uh, kiss a little longer. Okay, close a little longer with Big Red. Big Red had its own. Uh, I think they, thing. The Big Red's still being made, right? Yeah. yeah then um, the, the Doublemint Twins was a big deal, but gum used to have commercials. Uh, Mac, can we see the uh, Fruit Stripe commercial here? This Goodbye, Beach Nut Fruit Stripe gum. Yipes, Stripes, Beach Nuts, got them. Yipes, Stripes, and Fruit Stripe gum. Yipes, Stripes, five different flavors. Yes, Beach Nut Fruit Stripe gum. <laughs> And stripes that yeah. were different colors. Yipes! Stripes! Not Shame it's not a color, right? Different colors. Cherry stripe. Lemon stripe. Yeah. Orange, too. Mixed fruit and lime stripe. All for you in every pack of beach nut fruit stripe gum. Get beach nut fruit stripe gum. Mother, soon many ghosts and goblins will appear to plague you. But, what was that? Um, what fruit the hell stripe was that gum? rolling into right really there? Freddy Krueger or something? What the hell was going on? <laughs> hmm. Fruit stripe gum, you will agree with me, had the greatest flavor, but also it lasted the a very shortest time. amount of flavor for yes. no yes. time at all. Yeah, we yeah. read the same show. I'm still a big uh, chew yeah, guy. It's the, uh, it lasted very, very, a very short period of time. The cinnamon gum I eat today, I don't eat, I chew, uh, is Mentos. I use Mentos sugar-free uh, cinnamon oh. gum. with Expensive. A, a pre, uh, it's not cheap, and and I go through a it's lot of it. It's six dollars. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, yeah. gum in like By the way, those new, those, yeah, those new containers that are made of, you know, recycled paper, like no, you, it's if plastic. I'm paying six bucks, it's give me plastic, some, give me something plastic. It's a plastic uh, container like a that has like little yeah. mints in it, and they and you, that you can. Yeah, mine oh, I, I use it. I'm gonna grab one off my desk. Maybe you're getting the better ones because the ones I get Boy, are garbage. I wish I had my. You got to no, spend the money. Right the Mentos, the spend Mentos that it. I have. What? You got to spend money. To I'm gonna get grab it, it. Oscar. Hold Go on. get it. Oscar's saying that we're getting better packaging because I use Eclipse gum and it does come in like a plastic container with a resealable top, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The gum was originally launched back in 1969 when I was 10 years old, by the Beech Your Nut Company, which now primarily produces uh, baby and toddler food. The gum came in five flavors. You saw that during the commercial. Cherry, lemon, orange, and peach. Uh, there were also briefly uh, chocolate flavor. I didn't know. Oh, back in the late Ew. 70s. Uh, and chocolate there was gum. also a line of fruit stripe bubble gum. Uh, as usual, when stuff like this happens, some opportunists ran out to buy the remaining stock to sell it on eBay for uh, crazy prices. Yeah. America. Isn't that what we are now? That's you know? what we oh, do. Get it. Yeah. I better get I, it. Yeah. Mike, yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I think Beech Nut still makes some throwback gums. Oh, look, there's Oscar's B Mentos. And it is cardboard. Yeah. Yep, that's a yeah. cheap one. Those so, yeah. Is that Mentos gum, though? He's crumbling it right now. That's a <laughs> interest. This I would call this an interesting video day. That's yeah, a, I that's think so. How I would describe that. So, uh, yeah, get the. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of flavor that was that you had. There was for six dollars. It's a can lot. Can you of hold that up gum. so I can see it? I yeah, I can hold it up. It's the Mentos. It's. Uh, Is it gum or mints? It's pure fresh gum. Oh, okay. All right. This little mm. box. Uh, well, yeah. I you have... are being more responsible by buying cardboard. I love my plastic. I, I mean, the, I'll take the floods. This thing is terrible. I put ball <laughs> markers in them. There you go. Uh, a veterinarian listed the five neediest dog breeds to have. Uh, of course, all pets require attention and lots of love, but these five come with more, a uh, few more vet visits, insurance claims, and medical predispositions. Would you mm. like to? I'll go from five to one. Uh, number right. five is the Dachshund. 
Some dachshunds have a Napoleon complex, meaning they're aggressive to compensate for their small size. They also yeah, require dogs. exercise to avoid being overweight and are prone to invertebral disc disease. Yeah, so am also I. Long, terrible on terrible on stairs. The dachshunds. <laughs> <laughs> I, but Oscar, are you sure you're not thinking of a slinky dog? I mean, they're very close. <laughs> well, aren't the uh, <laughs> very close? The do- oh, the dog. That's the same dog. Yeah. Modeled after yeah, the yeah. slinky, slinky dog. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's Toy Story, right? That's in the movie Toy yeah. Story. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Number four is the Great Dane. They require a lot of food. Oh, can you imagine the poop? Uh, they're prone to cancers and heart disease. They also need their nails trimmed regularly. Uh, number three, a Labrador Retriever. Uh, they have really? endless energy and yeah, get into things. They are prone to issues with their paws and knees, like your retriever. You, you've got some yeah, uh, yeah. retriever yeah. in, in uh, the They're curious. Door. Number two. Yes. Our little guy. Not doing too hot. Sorry, guys. Uh, the Chihuahua. They're sassy and like confident. They also not are prone. feeling too perky. <laughs> they are prone, and this is right off the page, guys. They are prone to heart yeah. and eye diseases. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's so right. There it is. What do you think number one is, ladies and gentlemen? So, uh, Got to be a pug. Got to be a pug. Very close. You're in the neighborhood. You're English, very, bull, English bulldog. You're, English bulldog. You, you had it. It's a French bulldog. American bulldog. It's a French bulldog. They tend to have neck, knee, oh. and oh. back problems and heart issues. Since they have a flat mm. snout, they usually have breathing problems. Uh, they also require special grooming products or food to keep their skin in good condition. So there's that. That's yeah. tough. There it's go. tough, especially, but you know that's uh, it speaks of it speaks of Frankie. You've yeah. seen that, but Frankie's what now? Twenty six. Frankie is uh, is way up there in dog years. Uh, yeah. We're, yeah. we're going to forego talking about Frankie as per Mrs. Okay, right understand. Now. A sixty four year old grandmother finally today in Massachusetts named Roxanne. Uh, <laughs> she tried to poison her husband. Ooh, uh, because she had a new man waiting in the wings. The new man was soap opera star Thorsten K of The Bold and the Beautiful. Apparently, oh. some scammer what? was texting bright old Roxanne pretending to be Thorsten, and she believed it was real, partially because she was a diehard fan of The Bold mm. and the Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, mm. By the way, she's 64, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one message from Thorsten said, you have to get rid of your husband, honey. I need you so much. Honey. Oh, my God. How cruel is this? Roxanne said she needed to do some thinking, and that's when she hatched her plan. Ooh. She told Thorsten, making an amazing soup, special potion. He will be hungry when he gets back. <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. Wow. And later she said, hubby got back, not feeling well. Maybe I can collect life insurance. This must be a lady who was oh, dropped on her head. Funny and creative. Wow. Roxanne's husband did have some kind of medical event, and she was the one who called 911, but he has since recovered and will be fine. Who wants some of Carla's strychnine chili? It's oh, right here yum. where you yum. can get it. I don't know. They don't say anything about what the ramifications were and whether she went to the hoose cow. I certainly hope that moron goes to jail. That's I don't the way know, I look at but that. I will give you this. He is both bold. And beautiful. Bold and beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Yeah. Hey, f- uh, burger fans. Coming yes. up next. <laughs> Quadruple. Very excited. Important TMOS news. The TMOS store is under new management. And guess what? I've seen her naked. Oh, stop that. You wrote that for me. God, I'm not reading your copy anymore if I can't trust you. <laughs> Hilarious. But if you haven't ordered anything yet, good news. You didn't miss out. You can still get in on the good stuff, so visit our store. Open 24 hours. But wait, there's more. New merchandise options will be arriving very, very soon. As a matter of fact, new merchandise options may be in my kitchen right now. The uh, limited edition Chapeau de Podcast. No, it's not a beret. Don't be silly. (laughs) Be a proactive American. Keep visiting TMOSstore.com and share the TMOS gospel. Grab your gear and support the show. Don't say TMOS 50 times. The show you love, TMOS, TMOS. <laughs> the TMOSstore.com, the source for all things yeah. official, authentic, and awesome. Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank oh, you for yeah. your support. And remember our motto, Rob. Oh, yes. If you don't buy it, we won't sell it. Bingo. Uh, all right, so Oscar sends along a uh, lovely, lovely photograph of so the uh, eager. 
Mickey D's uh, reprising the, uh, I guess they had this out a few years back, this fabulous burger. Prior to the pandemic. What uh, I read is that it dropped a week, literally seven days before the pandemic. So it was a flop because no one was going to McDonald's during the pandemic. Well, they did eventually once when everybody opened back up and you get it, you can get it delivered. Right? Oh, I suppose so, you're right. Yes. But it did drop um, like seven days before all hell broke loose. Mike, I'm a number one guy when I go through McDonald's. Everybody has their favorite number from uh, the value meal. What is the number um, one, a quarter pounder, or is that a regular burger? No, burger. the number one meal is a Big Mac, ah. large fries, okay. and your choice of beverage. And a urine Tra- sample. Traditionally, a Diet Coke, because mm-hmm. that really helps the cause. Yeah, like our um, president would say. Two patties is more than enough. I'm intrigued by four. Uh, today is the... 10th of January, 11th maybe, I'm sorry, 11th. 11th of January. So you won't be able to try this till the 24th. Tease. This has been tested in Aust- This has been tested, this four patty Big Mac has been tested in Great Britain and Australia. And they seem to love it. I don't know why I wouldn't love it. There's a big, there's a, uh, there's a McDonald's inside on the ground floor retail of this, these, these three buildings were a part of called the row on the 19th, on 19th now. And I didn't realize it wasn't released yet. I was so excited when I texted you guys last night around 8.30 PM, we were still at work that I said, Shannon, I'll be right back. And I went downstairs to the McDonald's to try to order this. So I could actually give you a full report. You know, he does the share show. though, Rob. He really does. He does. This I am looking. I'm trying to find the picture of the burger and what I see. I didn't see this one yet. At 8:04 a.m. and Oscar uh, really busted his ass to get here on time today, and yes. I was the one that was tardy. And Oscar is very concerned, so he sends a picture <laughs> of the elevators. Yeah, to prove he's in the lobby. <laughs> I'm in the lobby. You rock. They wouldn't let me up. <laughs> you rock, brother. Yeah. You do. Thank, Thank you. you. And then That's 90 you. seconds later, I said, Oscar, the lobby looks good. He says, Are you here? I said, no, you sent a picture 90 seconds ago. It does look like a completely different building. The burger it looks does. pretty, it looks a little over overdone. in my. It opinion. doesn't, because no, if you've ever does. had a Whopper or, or a double Whopper, you know what kind of patties you're dealing with. Yeah, mm. but, the, but the Big Mac is so perfectly balanced as a sandwich. What's the difference? You get, you, if you ever had two Big Macs in a sitting, you now have to just eat one sandwich. Well, I don't know that that's their, their strategy there. So and here's, I, where they, here's where they do it correctly. The patties are not separated all by bread. That would be insane. That would be like a Dagwood. The, uh, the patties are two on top of each other in the place where right. the meat goes. So it's just a little more meat is what yeah. it is. It's yeah. manageable. I could knock it out if I wanted to. Well, sure. It's, 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 raci- it's ratioed. It's not racial? in the way that, you know. No, Ratio. Oh, right. poor Horatio. The ratio is correct, and I happen to know, and I don't, I don't even know why we're going back to him, but he always gets me all the deals. That Mac gets free fries on a regular basis from the McDonald's downstairs. He's because a regular fast food connoisseur. He's got the app. He gets the notifications. Yeah, you have to get the app for McDonald's because they have so many just like rewards and deals. That it's you're literally wasting money not using the the McDonald's app. I know for like, a fact that uh, Mac used the app. Thank you, consumer to, watchdog. He went to uh, he went to his McDonald's app a couple years ago, and they flew him to Vancouver for the Olympics. <laughs> it's just, Mac, do you, yes. are you capable with your app or with your body of knowledge of getting the calorie count for the uh, double Big Mac? Which is coming? Well, is Great it January twenty fourth, yeah. Oscar? Is that what you said? The twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Are you able to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I would knock that out if it was not eclipsing all of my calories for the day. I would try one. I have a prediction on the calories. While he looks for that, yeah. Uh, while I was at the University of Maryland uh, campus this past Friday. Uh, and we we're getting a, a full tour of the new innovation building and um, some uh, new parts of the campus. Mm-hmm. We drove by what I saw briefly in the news, the one and only burger joint run by Chick-fil-A. Did you know that there was one? No. That, that Chick-fil-A has yes. a... Yes. What? Chick-fil-A? Like a their spin-off... Their whole campaign is, is the, the cow saying eat more joint. chicken. Yeah. 
Let me pull up the details on it because I, I was like, that's where that is? By the way. Maybe worth the drive back. We were kind of all over There's the place. There's only one so- in the world? Hold on, Rob. Uh, what what, what, what I want to say yeah. here is the double Big Mac is essentially the same yeah. as a standard Big Mac. It has twice the beef. The double Big Mac is served on a sesame seed bun with American cheese, chopped onion, shredded lettuce, and pickles. Uh, they previously unveiled the double Big Mac in March of 2020, and it also released a smaller version of the Big Mac called the Little Mac. The Little Mac had one hamburger patty and did not contain a middle bun piece. So that's what's uh, going on. Do we have the calories yet, Mac? And you. Yes, I do. Okay, what is it is if I'm gonna do a double Big Mac, what is that gonna set me back in the calorie count? Seven hundred and forty calories. Could do it. Less than I thought. Yeah, I'm still in the game. It's much less because it's the protein. It's not that much different from a regular uh, Big Mac. I want one right now. Yeah, a regular is five ninety. Do you okay. think the uh, the ratio I mean, will be well, off? Why not just round up? This is great. I'm all in. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the Grab ratio it. will be off on sauce? Because the sauce is important for the Big Mac. They're not going to mess this up. They have the university, the McDonald's university that takes yeah. care of They'll all of this. They'll balance it. They'll test- do it the right yeah, way, yeah, Rob. Right. And by the way, right. I think if it's just a little, if you want a little more beefy. And let's be honest. I think Beef-er. the Big Mac, uh, <laughs> I, think the Mac, I think the Big Mac is a carby sandwich. I think it's a heavy carb. I think adding the beef patty, if you really want to get your burger on, you know, what are those two patties, right? They're not a quarter not pounder no. on a, no. if you put two together. Mike, the magical carb thing is the piece of bread in the middle, which is not necessary. But if you add one more, if you add two more patties, yes. I think that'll be a tastier, beefier sandwich. I am all in on it. I think I'm going to try it, uh, but maybe not because I can't. For you local kind of fans, the DMV, uh, as I mentioned, in College Park, Maryland, they have the concept called the Little Blue Menu from our friends at Chick-fil-A that have little burgers and bites. That's so weird. I've never heard that in my life. And it, it goes, it's countered everything that they yep. market. Yeah. The it's, Little it's, Blue what? The Little Blue it's called, it's called Little Blue Menu. And it's oh. only open on Sundays. <laughs> no, I used to I'm, have a Little I'm Blue serious. Menu. It's when I lived in Greenwich Village. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, am I gonna? All right. Anyway, it was uh, it was uh, fun. Uh, it's worth it. We should try. We should all commit to trying it. And I know that Mike, you're on your weight loss journey. But you know, if you can eat uh, 34 wings and then drink a pin, uh, pitcher of uh, Miller Lite, then you can handle one. Of did these better bowls. on Absolutely. the weekend than I did last night at bowling. Uh, last night at bowling, and once again, it's uh, it's that demon. It's that demon, Rob. The demon you've successfully kicked. That uh, when I do that. I get bitten in the butt. That orange Jamesons yeah. that I had, and it's not it, again it, with the it, orange Jamesons. Well, they had it. Uh, I mentioned it. To if the you're going to drink, don't alley. drink that. Don't yeah, drink it was, that. Uh, but it uh, helped my score, they- my first score, my first game. I shot yeah. for all you bowlers out there. I, look, I know you're jealous. I shot an 81. You're welcome. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you. I'm glad I could shoot. Yeah. 81. It helps, Mike. Swear it helps to God, every first score. Win, uh, what? It helps every score, but your liver score. Oh, if, thank you. I appreciate that. I suck. I really I said that like <laughs> definitively. And at one point, Carla yelled for me because I, I was doing something wrong. And, and she's been back like by the couches back there. She's like, Mike, Mike, Mike. And I turned around, the real me that you didn't see on that video. When I turned around, I went, what? And I look and like nine people are looking at me and I realized what I looked like. So we'll be right back, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for listening. What's your New Year's resolution? You probably want to tackle that ancient box of treasured videotapes and photos that you've been meaning to preserve, but you weren't sure where to start. Legacy Box makes it easy. Come on now. You're not getting any younger. (laughs) Simply send in your Legacy Box filled with camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures. Then get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and organized. It's like magic. And by going to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS, you can enjoy 50% off. That, I've done my math. Let me say that's, hold on. That's half off. Exactly. 
Yeah. You get started with Legacy Box, do it today. We've all used it. We all love it. Legacy Box, Legacy Box, Legacy Box. That's like a tongue twister. It's like a time machine that takes you back and it lasts forever. After 10 years in business, Legacy Box is the world's largest digitizer. And by the way, we've been with them for a lot of that 10 years. And we're That's delighted true. to have them as a fine sponsor of the Mike O'Mara Show. It's all done right here in the USA. Let's hear it for it. USA! 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 Max going to the Olympics again. <laughs> uh, kick off the new year by rescuing your family's most cherished memories that haven't been watched or enjoyed in years. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to save 50%. Buy today. Send it in when you're ready. Just go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. Again, that is LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. <laughs> Welcome back. You read that like Regis. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk a little foobal. We are very, very excited because it is that time of year. The uh, the dead weight has been mm. eliminated, and mm. it's the cream of Le Crop that is here, ladies and gentlemen. And I am talking about the playoffs in the NFL, and here he is to talk all playoffs. about it. Playoffs. The man, and I'll call him this. I, I don't. I don't want to embarrass him, but I'm going to call him. He's now legendary on this oh. broadcast. He is legendary. And Thank I you. think he knows his stuff. And I think your track record was pretty good this year, Nick. I, I agree there, Mikey. And, you know, speaking of a uh, legacy and legendary, uh, I mean, what a 24 hours with Pete Carroll, Nick Saban, and then today, this morning, Bill Belichick moving on. I yeah. mean, can you Carnage. imagine if this happened in the radio and podcast world? Imagine, imagine a day where Mike O'Mara retired and then... I don't know, Johnny Cakes Alvo, and then Shadow <laughs> Stevens. It would be an incredible 24 hours. Shadow, thanks for that. We would never Stevens. recover. Wow. So, yeah, we wouldn't yeah. recover. It would be a blow to we the really United States. Yes. It really would. Our yes. national treasures all gone on the same day. You ever exactly. think about uh, putting down the old headphones there, Mikey, as you see all these coaches moving on? You ever you get tired of the constant, the every day? There's a... It's just new material. It never, never stops. Then you got the people. Where's my mug? Where I didn't get this? And here's the donut show. And hey, hey, do a live show in my town. Why don't you? Why? You know why we won't, sir? Because you live in Toledo, Ohio. That's why we're not doing a show in your town. You live in the ninth best city in the 43rd best state. So maybe move somewhere where people are happy, okay? And then people will visit you, all right? Anyway. You know yes. something, Nikki? I, 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 Nikki, so I got to tell you, uh, so I don't have any intention of retiring because it's just too lucrative. Uh, hey, I hear you. <laughs> Same with me, with, with the gambling. <laughs> Why stop now? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. I, uh, I'm very, very pleased, very happy, and I feel... Uh, I feel younger than ever. I really. You feel look younger. great. You, you, you sound great. This Thank is, you. You're just hitting your prime. You, you've barely <laughs> scratched the surface of what you're going to become, Mike O'Mara. Thank yes. you. Let's get to the football, please. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> He's scratching. Yes, you're like C.J. Stroud, a young whippersnapper, a rookie wow. quarterback. That's called a segue, Spiewak. Oh, I right. hear you. <laughs> yes, the radio tournament. All right, so Texans, first game of the weekend, getting two and a half, two and a half points, excuse me, at home versus the Browns. Blacko, the old man versus C.J. Stroud, the young guy. Hey, the Browns are the favorite, and I get it. They got the great defense. But it's the Texans, baby. Give me D'Amico Ryans, the coach of the year, I'm predicting. And the, the, the Texans, they're going to win that game. It's going to be a close one. Then we got the Chiefs and the Broncos. Chiefs, four and a half points favorite. It's going to be, excuse me, the, the uh, Dolphins. It's negative 10 degrees in Kansas City, Mike. You're, you're a Florida guy now. Yeah. You, if you go to negative 10, you ain't surviving. I got it. Especially if you lost all this weight, you might die right there. So can't handle it. What's Tua going to do? The Dolphins, they're, they're, they got no shot. They're, oh, in their last 10 in games, under 40 degrees. It's going to be 50 degrees colder than that. It's got no shot. Chiefs win. Ugly game, 20 to 10. Yep. Lock it up. All right. How about uh, the Bills, Jimmy Cerrito, and the Steelers? Look, yep. the Steelers, you're, you're 10 and 7, but your, your quarterback's Mason Rudolph. I mean, give me, for crying out loud, you're taking on Josh Allen. The Bills giving 10. Let's get the They're going to win by 20. You can get 20 wings for 89. New deal. I made that up. I don't know if that's true. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the Packers and the Cowboys. Mike McCarthy Ball, former coach. You, Mikey, you're, 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 you love the classics, the Olympic standards, the Cowboys, yeah. the Packers. What do you think in this game? Let's ask your opinion. I think, uh, you know, all the way back in the days of the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field in the Ice Bowl, I think that this is going to be a great one. But I think that uh, the Cowboys – even with some of their issues, are vastly 
superior to the Green Bay That's Packers. That's why he's the Mike O'Mara. That's why it's yeah. the show's named after him. Yes, Thank the you. Cowboys, but I say the Packers cover. Jordan Love playing great. Mm-hmm. They found their next quarterback. The Bears, they haven't had a quarterback in 50 years. The Packers, all oh, they do is get quarterbacks. It's amazing. You know, mm-hmm. Barb, Rogers, Love, it's unstoppable. So sad for the well, Bears fans. Very sad. I don't know how they're still alive. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Uh, they got the number one pick. They'll botch it. All right. If there's a bust out there, they'll draft that kid. I can guarantee you that. All right. Yeah. All right. And then they'll trade fields and he'll be good. They they got no shot. All right. Uh, the Rams. It's the Jared Goff and the uh, Matt Stafford Bowl. The rematch. Uh, the, the the two form quarterbacks of their, their teams. It's going to be a good game. Rams getting three at the line. That's the game of the weekend to me. I say the Rams keep it close. It's a field goal game. That's where the line should be. When in doubt, take the underdog. We're going to go Rams to keep wow. it close. They got the better, the more experienced playoff roster, if you will. Okay. Uh, and then I don't know why this is the final game. Why is there's a Monday night game? I have no idea. <laughs> Monday night, it's the Buccaneers who scored nine points, I believe, against the Panthers. And the Eagles, who in all have given up. They literally had no longer want to play. They'd rather just just to go on the Kelsey Brothers podcast. That's all they should be doing. <laughs> There's no reason to even go out there. They quit. They've given up. If they win, they play the Cowboys, they get destroyed. So it's the Buccaneers and the Eagles in a game with one team that has got no chance to win their team. They just want to go and leave. So we're going to take the Buccaneers. Eagles, oh, you're, wow. you're done. You're out of this. The Bucs are going to oh, – Shadow Stevens, you better never leave us. <laughs> That's Nikki Diamond, everybody. There he goes. Wow, a lot, a lot to cover. On, I was uh, surprised that, that he. I, I, I'm thinking the Browns are going to win. Let me ask you this not. question, Oscar. I know you followed a little bit. You think uh, in Flacco. the event that uh, that the Eagles do lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you think uh, you think they would consider uh, booting Nick Sirianni, the coach of the uh, Philadelphia no, Eagles? No, no, no. A lot of people I, are talking I, I about it. So. Though. No, Mike, I, Philadelphia I, 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 is uh, a no. lovely, forgiving town. <laughs> And they'll just no, say no. better luck next year. <laughs> Though I am, I am happy regardless of what happens uh, this weekend for Baker Mayfield. Yeah, because it's cool when the guys that I come mean, from he, the abyss and they get back yeah. into it. It's fantastic. His next, this next contract will be the contract he should have had. So many years QB ago. stories. I mean, really, when you talk yeah. about Joe Flacco in Cleveland and the resurrection you root for the old man. of that, you got a roof for the yeah. old man. But at the end, C.J. Stroud is an example of a good draft choice that immediately jumps in and changes the fortunes of a team. It's very cool. And I, I, I look at him more than any quarterback in the NFL with visions of the fantasy of perhaps someday the Giants being able to draft a quarterback that will function. That's all I want. We'll see. Uh, we got to take a break. We'll come back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a good, finally, this week, we manage time properly. Yes. Yay. And you have to clean your slate of flip side wonders. And uh, we will do that when we return. You, ladies and gentlemen, are listening to the football-loving Mike O'Mara show. And uh, go Lions. Even though he picked the Rams, I say go Lions. I like, I, I, I like you. We'll be right back. Do you want to lose 21% of your weight? I've lost 70 pounds. I'm excited yes. to share with you that DermGlowSkin.com is now your one stop for finally getting control of your weight problem. All you have to do is click the weight loss button at dermglowskin.com, take the quiz, see if you qualify. A doctor will write you a prescription, the pharmacy will fill it, and your weight loss medication comes shipped directly to your house. Look, folks, um, the one thing I can tell you is that with these medications, they work. I'm living proof that they work, Mm -hmm. and the way they deliver them through the link at dermglowskin is, I think, as efficient as anything I've seen. It's fantastic. It's the real stuff, by the way, semaglutide and terzipatide. All you have to do, take a quiz, see if you qualify. If you do, a doctor writes your prescription. Bingo. It comes right to your door. I re-upped again. Did it today. Did it this morning before the show. And I'm here to tell you, uh, I am what uh, is, I'm in the home stretch right now. Yeah. And uh, I've modified my goal weight. My goal weight used to be 225. It is now 215. And uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, right now on track for mm, maybe uh, September, October of this year. And I will let you know how it goes. But uh, the journey so far is really good. If you've struggled with weight for too long, click the button, the weight loss button. Begin the best journey of your life. Make 2024 the year you finally reach your goal. With Derm Glow, you can do it. Hello. The flip 
Inside. Mike, you know, as a former restaurateur, that you depend on tourism dollars, right? Oh, yes. Amen. Like when Absolutely. you had Omeras, people, you would get the... Uh, you would get the Jimmy Buffett people. The Paraheads. You would get the Civil War reenactors. Oh, you yeah, need because to people, bring in it was people. always a, a vacation destination. Yeah, the yeah. train convention. And, great, and always a great destination city. Johnny, but, where do you want to go on your vacation? I want to go to the Zit. <laughs> I forgot you called it that. <laughs> Take me to the Zit, Daddy. But People why? died there hundreds your, of years your, ago. Your, your street of Manassas, where you live. Yes. Grant Avenue. Grant Avenue was beautiful. <laughs> Mike, it was a beautiful neighborhood. Yeah, picturesque. Except for two houses nice. down with the porch that was held up by two by fours. Mm -hmm. As a rule, it was a beautiful neighborhood. Beautiful and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have my car hit there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when you're looking for those tourism dollars, Mike, oh, yes. when you're looking for tourism dollars, why limit yourself to the United States mm -hmm. or the world? Okay. Why not look to outer space? That's what Ooh. Lexington, Kentucky is doing. They sent a tourism commercial to outer space because they need them alien travel dollars. This is the first time that we as a species have ever sent out a travel ad inviting aliens to come visit. <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky just beamed the world's first interstellar travel ad into outer space. AI voiceover guy. With the help of local scientists and scholars, Computer voice. Visit Lex created an advertising campaign designed to invite extraterrestrials to visit Lexington. Using a modified laser, the message was aimed at the Trappist-1 star system laser. 40 light years away. We're targeting the Trappist-1 system because we might actually get an answer in somebody's lifetime if there's somebody there watching. Yes. But the reason uh, scientists have been interested in it lately is because of the large number of planets that it has and what it's considered to be the habitable zone. So there could be life there. Why not send a signal and see if they answer? The message contains a bitmap key with prime numbers, the elements of life, molecules for water, ethanol, and dopamine plus horses and Lexington's iconic bluegrass landscape. The message also contained a collection of images representing Lexington, a selfie from the transmission event, and an audio recording from local blues legend T.D. Young. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I will tell you, Lexington, Kentucky, there are plenty of places that I, uh, I would visit, but Lexington is up there. I love that. I have never spent any time in uh, Kentucky, and I hear that Lexington, Kentucky is one of the most beautiful countryside. I'm sure it is, mm -hmm. but I think that there's got to be some sort of regulation. We can't just send whatever we want out there. Mm -hmm. like we, I mean, there has to be. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what? Look, I lobbied for Dundalk, Maryland. <laughs> They rejected me. Well, they didn't why. have a laser there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no Dundalk lasers. All right. I don't DoorDash very much. Do you DoorDash, Oscar, fairly frequently, or how do you do it? Yeah, I, I, at one point, I was I was a subscriber to Postmates, which is just like DoorDash. Yeah. Um, and during the, the pandemic, the majority of my weight gain came from uh, the variety of different restaurants around the city that started delivering food to your home. And in well, my day, do I did DoorDash, but what that consisted of was running up to the neighbor's house and lighting a bag of poop on fire and then running into the bushes. <laughs> and then they come out and stamp on it. Yeah, and we laugh our asses off. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, this is a McDonald's delivery. That corporation comes I've back. I've done that before. Um, but what happens is this lady orders from McDonald's and intends on tipping the DoorDash driver in cash. So it doesn't show up mm. on the bill. And the DoorDash driver has already written an angry note and put it in the bag saying, if you want to use DoorDash, you really should tip your driver. And then she's greeted at the door by the lady who hands her a cash tip. This is a lady who is so instantly sorry, she doesn't even accept the tip. Mac, let's roll the tape. Hello. Ignore it. You keep that. Why? Because I didn't see a tip on the app, and I put a little card in there. So please keep that. I'm sorry. No, I just had cash. Please. Take it's okay. It it's okay. Cause it's okay. Thank you. Have a good night. I called you an ass. 
She's so awkward. Because so what's like, like, can I, can you, can I, uh, because I don't use DoorDash down here, yeah. can you give me the protocol? The protocol is do it all may online. I, may, I, may I lay it out for yes, you? Yes, please. please. <clears throat> you pick the restaurant you want to order, order your food from. Yeah, order, and then at the end of the order, it, it, it recommends anywhere from a 10, no, yeah. 10, no, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it goes 15, 18, 25. Okay. Oh, okay. And, or custom, which is in really little letters, so <laughs> you can decide what you give. I have found, if you do not tip, which I always do, but if you do not tip, my wife does not tip because she thinks we're paying for the service, which you are, technically. Okay. Yeah. You traditionally don't get a, a dasher to come and deliver your 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 food because they they get to choose what they want to do. You get oh, the Nikki. Okay. So if, you get the Nikki special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. so what I do is I go you know minimum fifteen twenty percent, and right away someone takes my order and it gets there fast, and they haven't eaten my fries, and everything isn't spilled, and I have everything. Okay. There you go. Yeah. And so you choose. Yeah. But if you decide to pick up the order because you're a dasher and you deliver it, why go through the trouble of writing a note? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just eat it. Like, I just don't understand the price. Well, she didn't come off as the job. She didn't come off as horribly bright. So we'll see. Yeah, but but like, is that really going to show someone or, or or teach them a lesson? Like, you're a, it's a service industry. You're you're mm -hmm. a monster. You're a soulless you know, monster. Oscar, your your theory is strong. Do you know how they got the word tip? What, please tell me. It's an it's a it's an abbreviation for to ensure promptness. Ah, and so nice. by tipping, you are actually getting it to yourself faster. This is another side of the game that I and I don't want to get too into this, but Mike, you can pay for this. Um, you can pay an additional charge to get to the top of the line of the order. So for example, if a dasher has three orders, you can get priority for let's say three or four, at least for me, $5 more. So instead of a 50 minute wait, it could become a 43 minute wait. I went to school at American University with a really, really good looking uh, baseball player who's an athlete. And uh, yeah. he, he worked for uh, just the tip. Let's close with this. Uh, Mike, today, as you know, is National Milk Day. And Ooh. there is a, I love milk. I always keep it in the fridge. And there's a comic named Dean Lewis. Whole milk wonders, or skim? Always whole. Organic whole milk. Healthy. Good in coffee. Great on cereal. I don't mm -hmm. drink a lot of it, but I like to have it. Yep. So anyway, Dean Lewis wants to know why there are differences, vast differences, in the cost of milk. Why is there a difference in the price of milk? This is what I'm talking about. You go in, you want to buy some milk, like a gallon of milk, the big name brand is bored, and it's like 518 or 418 a gallon or whatever. Then you can buy the store brand, which if you're shopping at Walmart, they call it wall milk. Mmm. <laughs> And it's like a dollar ten less a gallon. And I'm like, milk is milk. Where are they getting this cheaper milk? Does that worry anybody else? But I mean, is the Borden cows hanging out in a pasture? Big lazy eyelashes, you know, polished bells, green grass, moo. <laughs> then you go over the hill, and there's the Walmart white trash cows, just <laughs> brown grass, and they all have tramp stamps, wearing three nipple rings, <laughs> <laughs> smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I like the moo. Take what you want, darling. I ain't using it. Oh. <laughs> Brown Ew. grass, Mike. That's all I got for you. You did a white trash moo, which made me laugh. We got to get out of here. We will be back tomorrow with the Mike O'Mara Show bonus, bonus. hour. And uh, I might be giving you a reveal of the palette, the blank palette of our latest TMOS store item. Might be doing that for you. Just for will you. Will we get a lease update? What's that? Yeah, we also the lease update. A lease update. A lease update. Yeah, for your car. Uh, if oh. you're going to be blued or tattooed. I will give you that update as well. I'll tell yes. you what I'm going to do. And I uh, kind of tipped my hand today. Anyway, we got to get out of here. We'll be back tomorrow for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. Michael Merritt saying so long, everybody. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. I'll recommend your services to anyone I know who has diabetes.